everyone, I'm back with another video and in today's video we have a, a mouse to repair. This is a Cooler Master MM710 mouse and the switches on this one, the left and right clicks are not responding well and I'm gonna to show you how to step by step how to replace the switches on this ones and how to open it up. Even if, if you want to clean it up too, you can do the, follow this video for cleaning. Alright, so I'm going to go over the tools that I'll be using. Every tool that I use is going to be linked in the video description in case you want to purchase for yours. They are not too expensive at all. You can keep them in, around the house for any other repairs that you want to do. Alright, so let's get into it. First thing first, you need a workshop towel. One sheet of the workshop towel. I'll be using two sheets here from the last time I used it. And you need a basic one, a used or new toothbrush to clean it, a guitar pick to opening tool, a curved tweezers, it comes handy. You need a screwdriver set, I'll be using iFix screwdriver set, we're going to use a Phillips number one. All right, next we need a solder iron. I recommend you guys to grab this solder iron. It's very cheap, it's not too expensive, and it's really good professional to keep it around the house for any project that you want to use. This is a PS100, all right, and it works with a 12 volt charger. So we're gonna plug this one in here. A little stand for it. Let's put it on the stand. And you need a flux, any sorts of flux, it worked. I have a big container. You can get a small portion of the flux for soldering. And I have a little brush to grab the flux from here to apply it on my work. You can use a stick or whatever. You need a solder, regular solder for electronics. Uh, important one is that uh, the soldering wick. These are really cheap on eBay. You can purchase them. They're like about 50 cents or 20 cents. And these are pretty much a mesh of the fabric of mesh of copper. And you need a scissor to cut the excess that it, whatever you use. You just want to cut it. Just grab a scissor, have a big scissor right there. A little ceramic container just for my likings to put whatever drips in there. Uh, for the next one, we're going to use a, a low temp desolder paste. It's not a desolder, it's like a solder paste. Is a low temp, is a 180 Celsius uh, paste. It's dried up, but we're gonna use it for a little bit to desolder the joints for the switches. It makes life easy. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of here and put it right on the container. I have this sponge, metallic sponge. They set it for the kitchen and stuff, appliance and stuff to clean the tip of the solder. Just dip it in there, it just cleans it up. And the most important one are the switches. I'll be using these switches, I found out that they're really reliable and they have a high. The main one that they come in here, the Omron, they give you 20 million clicks, but it doesn't even last 20 million. This one is supposed to be 60 million. So we're gonna grab these ones and we're gonna use this one. We're gonna use two of these ones. So we're going to purchase two switches, whichever switch you want, you can purchase. Uh, you need an alcohol, 98% 95% alcohol. You can use a 90% too if you want. No big deal. And pretty much with all this set, we're going to get started. So we're going to remove the mouse from here. So let's go ahead and remove it. Alright, if you, we're gonna remove the pads under the mouse, but if you want, you can purchase the new ones. If yours is really damaged, you just wanna purchase, you can purchase new ones. Usually with these brands in the box, they do ship with the new pads, but if not, go on eBay, purchase yours and new pads. Alright, you can, if you wanna salvage the pads in here, you can apply a little um, heat with a hair dryer, so it blends that hair safe. And, or you can use an alcohol, just put a little bit of alcohol spray on top and it start rubbing right on that with an opening tool your guitar pick and it will release this stuff and you can see it's kind of dirty. You want to do that on both. There we go. Now we can grab a little towel in here. 
clean up the pads on the bottom, make sure you don't have any more adhesive in there because you want to replace them. You can put a double-sided tape and put the old ones on top. But we just need to remove the back pad, you don't need to remove the front pad. Remove the two screws that are right underneath. All right. Now that we remove the screws, what you need to do, you can use your fingernail or you can use a guitar pick to lift it up a little bit like that. And you want to, once you have it in 45 degree angle, you want to push it towards the front a little bit, just about a half a millimeter and just unhook it right there. Now you can take this top portion, brush it off, wash it out, leave it for drying. i use an alcohol to just clean it up inside out. All right, that one is clean. Now we're going to remove the board. Before we remove the board, we're going to remove this contact. We're going to wiggle it around and it should come out pretty easy. Just like that. We're going to remove two screws, one, two, on the sides. Now, in order to remove it, we need to unhook the hooks at the back. So push this jack back this way a little bit and then release and then you can just bring up straight upward. This one was repaired because I see that the switch is being repaired a little bit before. So we're gonna leave it like that. We're gonna remove the scroll. We are gonna remove these two side uh, switches right in here. Right. So to remove it, it's pretty easy, it's not too hard. So what you wanna do in here, we're gonna apply a little bit of flux right on the joints, grab a little flux. And we're going to apply right over the contacts that we want to desolder right there. So it's this one in the corner and the one right on the other side, both of them. So what are we going to do here? It's pretty simple. We're going to grab our hot iron station and we're going to grab a little bit of the low temperature solder paste on the tip. And once we have that one in there, we are going to apply on the legs of this contact. And we're just going to go back and forward. And the contact, the switches should just fall off right there. It just falls down right away. Just grab any excess that you have. Do the same thing on the other side. I'm going back and forward. Simply. And it falls down right there. I'm gonna shake off this extra. And we're gonna clean up the workplace. So we're gonna apply alcohol. And we're just gonna rub over. We wanna remove any old you can use a toothbrush. Now in this side, I can see there's a little whole bunch of solder in here. So I'm going to remove this extra solder that they have. Okay. Now, what are we going to do here? We're going to prepare the wick. We're going to dip it in a flux. So just grab a little bit of flux and pretty much put a flux right over on both sides. What flux does, it makes it easy to absorb the solder. And we are going to put this solder wick right on top of this uh, hole. And we're going to put the hot soldering iron on the top. And we're going to hold it there for a few seconds. And we are going to move it around. And it will desolder itself. There we go. You want to do the same thing on the other side? I see one of the holes is still not absorbed. There we go. So we're going to clean it up again. Put alcohol and clean up the pads. 
Can we have the other side too? What an alcohol. There we go. Now we're gonna grab the switches, make sure the switches, the click is towards the front and put it right on top. Hold it. Make sure you hold it evenly. You wanna apply a little bit of the flux on the pins. Okay. Now we're gonna use the solder iron. We're gonna grab a little bit of normal uh, solder on the top of the tip of the pen, and we are gonna hold it down for a few seconds. And there we have it. Nicely soldered right in place. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing on the other one. We're gonna grab it, we're gonna put it in there, we're gonna hold it, and we are gonna put a little flux. Grab a little bit of the solder on the tip, and hold it. A little more. There we go. Now, once to finish it off, one last cleaning. I don't like leaving the flux on the board. It looks ugly. Pretty much nicely clean. Do another pass with a brush. Make sure you clean the lens. Nicely with an alcohol, so it doesn't have any, so it really detects nicely. So there we have it. It's about to look like this. So what you're going to do now is to turn off your solder station. You want to grab the bottom section that you cleaned up. You want to put this, oh, before we put this, let's grab the wheel. Put the wheel in there. Drop it down. And push it down in the corner, it clicks in. Put the two screws that you removed. Grab the connector, push it in. Grab the top portion, the housing. You want to bring it down in a 45 degree angle inside and just scoop it in there. You have to click it and then bring it down. Put the last two screws at the back. And then if you have the old uh, pads that you want to put in or just purchase the new one. Or if you want to use the old one, you can get those tiny uh, double sided tape. These are really sk skinny ones and put it on top. Or you can just put a one dab of super glue if you want to, or you can just get the new pads and apply them right over. Just like this. So grab these pads, put it right on top. Just remember once you put the new pads, you have to remove this film on the top, this plastic, otherwise it's not gonna slide nicely. Again, if you guys like my videos, if you find my videos helpful and helping you guys out, you can support the channel by clicking the like and subscribe. I will greatly appreciate it. It helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions in the commentary. Alright, there we go. Nicely done. Clicks are working beautiful. Roll, scroll. Left, right, all the clicks are working. And this is how you can replace your switches for your Cooler Master MM710 mouse. I hope you guys liked this video and helped you guys out. If you have any questions or requests, feel free to leave them in the video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.